In the ancient history of Egypt, there is a chapter cloaked in mystery and myth, a story of foreign rulers who rose to power on the banks of the Nile. For centuries, these rulers were known simply as the Hyksos, a name that echoed through the ages as a foreign force, outsiders who brought war, upheaval and change to the land of the pharaohs. But who were the Hyksos, really? And how much of what we believe about them is rooted in historical truth? As we uncover their story, we find that the Hyksos were not a unified people or tribe as once thought. Instead, they were six influential leaders, individuals who rose from the east, each carving a place in Egyptian society during a time of great division and opportunity. These were not tribal invaders, nor a cohesive ethnic group bent on conquest. They were leaders, skilled in the arts of governance and warfare, each ruling over the northern region of Egypt, which was fractured and ripe for change. When the Hyksos first arrived, Egypt was in a period of vulnerability, divided between various regional powers. The Middle Kingdom had weakened, and without centralized authority, the northern delta region became an open stage for those seeking power. The Hyksos seized this moment, not through brute force alone, but through shrewd diplomacy, strategic alliances, and perhaps most significantly, the introduction of military innovations that would change Egyptian warfare forever. Among these innovations was the horse-drawn chariot, a powerful tool that granted them a formidable advantage and symbolized their strength and adaptability. Yet the Hyksos were more than just warriors. They were also merchants and diplomats, establishing trade routes and fostering exchanges that brought new goods, ideas and technologies to Egypt. They built fortresses, founded cities, and created administrative systems that mirrored those of their Egyptian counterparts. Their rule was not solely one of dominance. It was also one of synthesis. They adopted Egyptian religious practices, paid homage to Egyptian deities, and even incorporated Egyptian titles, blending seamlessly with the customs of the land they governed. Over time, the Hyksos and the Egyptians became intertwined, their cultures blending in ways that are still visible in the artifacts and records they left behind. They were no longer merely outsiders. They were rulers who embraced the Nile as their own, honoring its gods and its people. But this blending was not without friction. The Egyptian upper classes, particularly those in the south, viewed the Hyksos with suspicion and resentment, seeing them as foreign usurpers who had taken advantage of Egypt's moment of weakness. As generations passed, this resentment grew. Eventually, it sparked a powerful movement among native Egyptians to reclaim their lands from these foreign rulers. Under leaders like Kamose and his successor Amose, Egyptians launched a determined campaign to drive out the Hyksos and reunite the country under native rule. The conflict was intense, with both sides fighting to hold on to their vision of Egypt's future. Ultimately, the Hyksos were expelled, their cities destroyed, their influence erased from Egyptian rule, but not from memory. The legacy of the Hyksos, however, is complex. They were both innovators and occupiers, foreign rulers who transformed Egypt and left lasting marks in Egyptian military practices, trade and society itself. The memory of the Hyksos would endure, not just as a symbol of foreign rule, but as a reminder of Egypt's resilience and capacity for reinvention. In the end, the Hyksos challenge us to look deeper, to understand that history is not always a tale of us versus them. Sometimes, it is a story of adaptation, fusion, and the ways in which different cultures shape and redefine each other. The Hyksos remind us that Egypt's story is not a simple one. It is a tapestry woven from countless threads, foreign and native alike. Nevertheless, Egyptians wanted the Asiatic Hyksos to exist outside of Egypt.